No anyhow lifestyle can grant access to God's plan from his word. For the skills of God is limited only to those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. So think straight. Think straight. It's your turn. Think straight. It's your turn. Yeah. Visions and revelations are custodians of every great destiny in the kingdom. Paul said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 1. But because God has exalted his word above his name, the revelation of the world is superior to any vision. Come on now. Revelation of the world is access to God's plan is superior to any form of vision any man may have. And I tell you the reason why. We have Psalm 138, verse 2. It's exalted his name above his word above his name. Why vision can be misunderstood or misinterpreted? The word is settled in heaven forever. Whatever you find in the world is settled in heaven forever as you are lying with it. Psalm 119, verse 89. Whatever, Lord, thy word is set in heaven. His word lives and abides forever. First Peter 1 and verse 23. Simple analogy. No powerful vision can shatter darkness. Darkness will only surrender to the authority of light. And the entrance of his word gives light. And gives understanding to the simple. And we live in a world of darkness. Where your rise is provokes the wrath of your enemy. Your rise, your success. Why they say congratulations, they are saying cut him down. Cut him down. That's why light is superior to any vision that any man may have. In fact, vision thrives on revelation. It takes revelation for any vision to see the light of day. It takes revelation for any vision to see the light of day. As a pastor, I've met quite a number of pastors that come to me and say, well, Sir, nothing is working. I said, are you sure of your calling? We are sure. But I said, seek for light. Nothing can shatter darkness like light. You have called me, Jesus. How do I walk it? Arise, shine, for your light is come. No, your vision has come. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is here upon thee. For darkness shall cover the earth, and darkness the people, but the Lord shall let us upon thee, glory shall be seen upon thee. The Gentiles will come to your light, and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Please get acquainted with the world. That's where God's blueprint for your life is. Get acquainted with the world. He said, acquaint now that I said with me, and be at peace, thereby shall good come unto thee. Acquaint yourself with the world. That's where God's blueprint for your life and my life resides. Today there's an overblown of the word vision. Everybody, I have a vision, I have a vision. You ask them what's your vision? That's your ambition. I want to look forward to as a person. Not minding what 
God's view about your life is. I had no plan to be in ministry, never. And God knows, and I knew. Where am I today? Following this plan. We can only scale the utmost height by revelation, not by vision. If you will hearken to my voice, observe to do what I command you. I will set you on high above all nations of the world. And all these blessings that you are looking for shortcuts again will come to you. I had that encounter in 1984. He said, my son, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. Based on Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. I said, Lord, I'm interested. He said, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. And he tells us what to do from his world. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Then you're on your way to your utmost height in life. You won't miss your road. Yeah. You won't miss your steps. Yeah. You won't miss your steps. Yeah. You won't miss your road. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's God's plan. Instead that light is power to make a little one become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation, that is the light of God's word, can make a nation out of a person. By walking in that light, Isaiah 60 and verse 22, We all know that only light can thrive in the midst of darkness. It's a simple logic. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. No circumstance on earth can prevail against the truth in which you are walking. So get at the truth. Circumstances will bow to you. Get at the truth. Circumstances will bow under your feet. There is nothing God has given you and me that the enemy will not contend with. And he contends in the realm of weakness, in the realm of darkness. So we need light to have our way out. God's plan for me and for you, their aim is war. All we need is Open my eyes to behold the wondrous things you have in stock for me in your world. Psalm 119, verse 18. No one can see a future in his future and be depressed. The reason for the people, you can't see beyond where they are. But God's word is the lamp to our feet and the light unto our path. I got some things early. After my salvation, that was at the age of 16, I first got from my Bible, I don't know where I was looking for, in um, Revelation 5 and verse 10, Christ has redeemed us unto our God as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. Immediately, a royal mentality engulfed me. I want to go out and I will ask myself, will a king go out like this? No. David, go change. Will a king engage someone in a boxing fight in the seat of his village? No. Will a king shout on top of his voice in his town? No. A royal mentality engulfed me at the age of 16. I'm not a slave today. But the man thinking in his heart, so you see. You can't see yourself as a king and still be jumping fence as a student. No. And still be involved in exam practice. No. You can't see yourself as a king and still be lying for free. It 
changes the way people think when you can see the future laid out for you in scriptures. It is challenges that makes champions. You never find a champion in any field of contest without going through challenges to emerge one. So the Lord told me early, at the age of 16, I'm not slow. And I've said that several times, God is not slow. I caught it in the month of March like this, 1970, at the conference. I was 16 years old. So I got the baptism of, of patience, which everybody needs. This generation doesn't have it. You need to seek for it, patience. Patience. So I could re delight myself in a church that started with six people. I called it four, please, four. I used to call it three and a half. But the half is now a full-scale man. He's a pastor in this church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And he testified when he was 40 years in the church, just a few weeks ago. So that baptism kept me rejoicing as I saw four became six. My God, God is coming. I saw that became nine. Oh my God, this is wonderful. And then 12, and then 15. You need patience. Shortcuts leads to danger. That's why many of them are in prison now. Yahoo, yahoo. They are there. Now you have many teenage pregnancies today. Yeah. Nineteen seventy-four. I caught a word from the Lord in Jeremiah. I was reading all man of things. <laughs> As the ostrich lays eggs and hatches them not, so it's a man that gets riches and riches are not by right. He shall live it in the midst of his days. At the end, he shall be a fool, big fool. He will die before his time. I was 20 years old, and a friend of mine walked in. His name is also David. I said, David, come on. See what the Lord told me this morning. Don't touch anything that is not yours. That means he's talked to me. He's talked to me. He said, brother, we had to get us. What is us? He said, anything that lays egg is a bird. Can't be a goat. I don't know the us, but I know that he lays egg. So he met me several years after at Landmark University. He said, remember what you told me, 1974? I said, no, we share many things. So he brought that up. So I can't be tempted by what you have. I was warned before I would see anything around me. You are working in the company, you are stealing what the company has. What kind of a man? Are you a believer? You are changing books and as an accountant. Is that how to be a believer? Every great destiny is built on revelations of the world in the kingdom. Every great destiny, sir. Vision is secondary. Revelation is principal. Vision is secondary, sir. The vision of the world can translate to any point in life. If I was selling pure water, I would, I would prosper. I had an encounter with what makes people prosper. I bought into it, so I knew I was going to prosper. Today, my patience, from the church of four to six, to 10, now you have churches, one for the six nations Hallelujah. of the earth. Over 21,000 churches in Nigeria, yes, yes, from the church of three, four, five. The patience of faith is not to wait forever is to test your trust in God. I had a beetle. It was what carried members to where they would catch a boss in those days. We closed evening, I mean, evening service and I would carry them. Four people in my beetle, I would be struggling to turn the chair in, drop them at the filling station, come back again and carry the other people. 
But today we are flying. <laughs> Amen. And not just flying by trial. We have been flying for 26 years. I mean, 28 years. People don't fly that long, if you ask them. <laughs> Please know that God is not slow. You are in good hands. Abraham waited, but Abraham is still alive. Abraham didn't turn his back. Where are you turning your back to? So I found the mystery of each free marriage as he showed me. It wasn't known in our time now. Many people are already in it. My counselor asked me, David, what are you looking forward to? I said, he's free married. He said, how do you mean? <laughs> and I tried to explain. He's a very respectable Christian leader. And I love him. He loves me. We talk freely. Much older. I said, we've been in caution for some time and it's been good. He said, now, you may not step on one another's toes when you sit together, when you live, when you're apart. But when you live together, it's impossible to step on one another's toes. And I said, sir, but I'm sitting with you on the same bench, the same coach. Why am I not stepping on your toes? I said, two reasons, sir. I'm not blind. Two, I'm not wicked. All this tussling with husband and wife, ignorance, blindness. Blindness. You know what led to polygamy in our culture? This wife is no good. Let me try another one. Ah, this one is worse. <laughs> <laughs> Ask anybody that divorced. There is a secret regret behind the door. Why now? You had that testimony that to say, I don't know why I left. Please, I'm coming back. Why? They pray that spirit out. So I knew we were heading for his free marriage before we got married, sir. Not trial by error. By light from scriptures. No one among you will have Christ in your home. Amen. You will not get married into trouble in your life. Amen. That's how much light is superior to visions, to anything that to dreams you can't navigate through darkness without light you'll be stagnated at a point there was a time in Israel or in Egypt where there was no light and they couldn't move from one place to another they couldn't see one another so they sat in one place for three days that's chapter 10 of Exodus verse 21 to 23 you don't want your life stagnated. Locate God's plan in his word and keep working in it. Keep working in it. I've never kept the money of this ministry in my hand since inception. That they took offering in church and I was going home with it. Never. Never. I was one long before I was called to ministry. There are many great destinies here, and every one of you is involved. You won't sell off. Yeah. You won't trash your destiny. Yeah. Have you ever seen any drug addict live a responsible life? Uh, even in the nature of so why are you buying into it? Why? You lose your worth, you lose your value, you, you lose everything. No one can see a future in this future and be depressed. Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now set at the right hand of majesty of the throne of God. For the joy that was set before him. So what Revelation does to unveil your future that keeps you rejoicing all the way. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. They became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. You hear me say again and again <laughs> that I'm not surprised at where we are, 
blessed be God for, for being faithful to his word and performing them by giving me the grace to obey what he says to do. I'm not surprised. This is your best time in life. He said, young men shall see vision. See the vision of God for you in the world. In the days of your youth, before the evil days come when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Seek it now. All right. That was a very powerful video by Bishop David Oedipo. You are welcome to the commentary section of this video where we make powerful analysis about what the preacher was talking about in the video. Sincerely speaking, I must commend that I was blessed by that teaching and it requires that we we'll go back again and listen to what he was saying. And personally for me, what I learned in this video was God is not slow. When you are on the right direction and you, you, you involve him in that direction, he is not slow. He is not slow. Like, just look at the amazing testimonies Papa gave in these videos that shocked me. And one of the things he said was that even though he was a pure water seller, that he would have still become a uh, wealthy man today. Now, it's not because he's becoming a wealthy man because he's a pure water seller or because he's a preacher. He's going to become a wealthy man because he found purpose. And I love something his son said in one of the videos at the East Light Life Convention. And one of the things he said was, Vision is God's plan for you. And revelation is God's word for you. Now, it's, it's, it, is the, it is what God is saying from his word. And it's called revelation. And what God shows you to your word is what we call vision. So it's very important that as you... Uh, involve God in your day-to-day -day activities. Make sure you are on the right path. Make sure you communicate it in. Make sure you align the things so that you won't miss purpose in your youth. And the best time for any man to accomplish his purpose or purpose is in the days of her youth. Is in the days of his youth. I pray for somebody today that as you accomplish your purpose in this time of your youth, may you receive it manifestations in the name of Jesus. I'm sure you were blessed by that powerful video. I would love you to take your time, watch it, go over it again, and see the essence of taking responsibility in the days of your youth. And your life will not be the same in Jesus' name. Remain blessed and have a great time.